Right, I want to speak about whether you benefit when you live with your parents if you're an adult child and whether your parents actually benefit from living with you. <laughs> now I can't find this thing which I need to... <laughs> um, right, thank you so much. <laughs> right, so guess what I will talk about? It's called multi-generational living, which as you already found out is up to 15% in the UK. And that's actually excluding uh, extended families, which is about 1% in the UK. Uh, so, as you can see, it can be a happy living all together, including a dog and a cat. So, everyone is happy, but maybe it's not everyone. What do we know about this? Right. So, could it be draining, actually, for you as a little child or for your parents? Imagine this situation. A young chap coming back to parental home, playing games, playing drums, eating KFC, leaving a mess, parents are really annoyed about him. Or you now need to do this daily chores, washing their clothes, but actually it could be that adult children are annoyed with you too, because they want to have their own daily routines and you just try to, you know, have your own rules because it's your house. But could it be actually rewarding for you and your parents? Well, let's look at this situation. Your father spends more time with you, you go fishing together, you support each other, it's rewarding. You pay more attention to your mother and she feels that you love her, she gets your support, she feels happier and you feel happy too. And finally, it's, you know, just about uh, being with each other, have a happy family life. So, you know, spending more time together, which is so important for our both physical and mental well-being. Right, now, has any one of you heard ever about emptiness syndrome, right? So, what can you say about it? Just uh, when maybe one sentence. So it isn't, yeah, so it is about um, adult children, yeah, living at home. So when all chil adult children left, when basically you feel lonely, indeed isolated, you kind of left behind. Of course, it depends whether your adult children move to another street or to another town or maybe even to another country. So you can have a different, you know, level of this syndrome. But basically, this phenomenon uh, uh, describes when parents cope very much to adjust to a new life stage when they're basically by themselves alone, especially if you're a single parent. So is it a myth or reality? Maybe at the same time parents actually say, woohoo, right, we can spend time for to each other, finally. Oh, that's, well, basically I wanted to say that sometimes uh, this phenomenon looks like a crazy <laughs> situation in your life that you know you're getting a little bit out of hand so <laughs> yeah this cat doesn't understand why her owners decided to dress her in this baby clothes but you never know how crazy you can get when you miss your your children a lot or you simply need you know to give someone this support which you used to give to your children when they were living with you in the same house you know so dad will give a good talking and mom will give you a hug which is you know we're all human beings we all need it right so this is emptiness syndrome which many parents face at some uh, certain stage of their life but who decides? Is it adult children who want to leave parental home and be independent, do whatever they want? Or is it actually maybe parents who want finally to spend time for themselves, you know? So, um, do they do it gently, parents, you know? Do they encourage them to leave home earlier, to have their own job, pay their rent by themselves, to learn how to be independent? and how to have your own family? Or do they try to encourage them to stay home, but it's actually adult children who get annoyed with them a lot? Right, so we talked about nest living, 
And does anyone know about boomerang generation? Yeah? So wh what, do you, what do you know about this? Well, <coughs> to my knowledge, is, um, it's people who, uh, children who leave home to go to university, but then come back to, um, to again stay with their parents, when looking for a job. Mm -hmm. So the, one of the reasons is uh, unemployment, basically. So yes, uh, basically it's when adult children leaving the nest and then coming back to parental home. Yeah, it's not when you play boomerang, unfortunately, sorry. So, returning home adult children. What do we find out about this? What actually people think about it? Yes, indeed, it often happens after they graduate, they can't find a job, they can't afford living independently, so they move to parents. And it can be pretty, maybe, painful for their parents. Back to the nest. So generally, there is a negative portrayal in social media about boomerang generation. So I have a couple of examples, specifically focusing on the UK scenario. Right, so how parents cope when their kids won't leave home. So what we can see is there is that they basically leave a mess and the picture about them is that those kids simply don't want to leave home. And obviously we can see that parents are a bit annoyed. So you worry about their future as a parent but you also want to have your own space. What we see next is that it also implicates aging problem is that all the parents, even all the parents have to deal with this because as you know fertility age uh, increases, people postpone having first child and by the time when your kid is mid middle 30 age and you are you know almost retirement age you won't spend more time maybe with your you know friends or just with a cup of tea in front of TV instead you know, you have to hear loud music, see their friends, you know, uh, hearing smashing door early at night because they come back from the club. So, do you feel happy or not? Or who knows? Right. And another situation is when it's a single parent, also older age. So here we see that 21-year-old son lives with his 66-year-old father because he cannot afford his house yet, so he is saving money for house. So that's one of the most um, common reasons in the UK why adult children come back to live with their parents. Not simply because they are lazy, but because they need to save money and housing is expensive in the UK. And parents understand it, but is it still beneficial for them and for children as well? Well, that's a question. Before concluding on, you know, that's the question, what is the answer, I want to go a bit further about boomerang generation and talk about baby boomers. Right, sounds a bit strange. Why would I say baby boomers? Well, uh, actually, it's not about, you know, any babies, it's about older generation, but it's about baby boomers who were born, you know, fertility rate was high in 1940s, 1950s in the UK, and housing was affordable, and then now they are, you know, getting to the retirement age, and actually now they need help from their adult children. So it's a baby boomerang generation. Right, so there is another example from the media, is that basically a very old mother lives with her also probably like you know 60 years old daughter because she desperately needs her in care you know provision so they support each other in a sense that you know it's all about family bonding but it's also the problem is that that generation which also Jihana showed on the population pyramid is that generation which will now require a lot of uh, support provision from you know both formal and informal in the UK. Well, so what to take it in general is that intergenerational living is that parents live with their adult children. It can be also that they live together with grandchildren as well. They both help each other with childcare, with caregiving for all the parents. 
but it's also about housing. So maybe some of you heard about George Clark, our architect. He has some problems about ugly house. Um, so they renovate houses. And he talked about multi-generation living on his blog. Because even builders and architects find this, you know, a problem in the United Kingdom that the houses are not, you know, they are not constructed properly for nowadays, um, for nowadays needs of the population to live with several generations, right? To live with your older parents or with your adult children who already have children as well. So what this architect says is that planning authorities are not anywhere near close to having planning policy in place to promote multi-generational living. So the housing market in the UK is not gearing up for multi-generation living at all. So, for example, if you want to have a shed uh, in your garden, so your adult child will leave there to have like, you know, own little space, you can have it as a shed, but it will not be officially for living. So uh, the councils will still not allow you to have it as a separate little home. So essentially, you can be stressed, not simply because your adult child lives with you, but because there's just not enough space for everyone in the house. So they just need their own, you know, territory where they can, you know, relax in the evening and just, yeah, pay more attention to themselves, which is nowadays is very important in our society. Well, one of the solutions, I thought, but it's not for everyone, is tiny houses, <laughs> maybe even next to Big Ben, but I don't think that the council will allow. But anyway, so they're very popular nowadays in the uh, USA. So many young uh, couples, they can afford this little house, they can be on wheels, so they can travel around, explore the world, well, the United States, I don't think you can go far <laughs> than across the world. But I think in, in Europe they also start to build them, so this is a big business in the United States. And I think it's very cute, especially if you want to see each other very often with your parents, provide help, but at the same time not sharing the same house. But not everyone's cup of tea, I understand. So there should be other solutions pretty soon, you know, in the UK and other countries about which I want to talk about as well. So talking about all this situation in the UK, that adult children desperately need housing but they cannot afford, uh, older parents, they need help from their children because they might be, couldn't provide enough, you know, for formal care or they expect them. But is it really so bad in the UK comparing to other European countries? Well, let's see. So as I said, it's about 15% in the UK. In Western Europe, it's between 10 to 15%, so we're pretty close. But in Nordic countries, it's maximum 10%, so it's much less common to live with your adult children. What happens next is that when we look at Southern Europe, we can see that the uh, share rises. It's up to 25%. So in such countries like Italy and Spain, actually adult children prefer to stay longer in their parental home until they finally uh, find their partner and decide to get married, and then they only move out. But what happens in Eastern Europe? Okay, prepare yourself. Up to 40%. So it's so common in Eastern Europe to stay in the same house, or I would say rather a flat with your parents in a small space, even after you get married and you have your first child. But if you move out from parental home, it's often associated with marriage and having uh, a first child. So for example, the age of leaving parental home in Russia on average is 25 years old. It's the same age on average for women to have the first kids and getting married. So it's all like sequential. But it's different story in such countries like, for example, from the north of Europe. They first move out, live separately, get a job, cohabitate, and only then, after 30, on average, they have the first child and get married. So you can see that different life stages can actually 
be at different time points of your life. And this word is correlating with your likelihood to live with your parents. Right, so whilst I'm talking about different patterns across Europe, I want to remind you about the past. So remember that before uh, urbanization and industrialization, families could survive only by having many children so they can help them on the farm, right? The mortality rate was very high, both you know, children and adult mortality rates. Life expectancy uh, was low, hence. So all they could do is have ma as many children as they could to provide a happy uh, aging for themselves, to secure their uh, older age. What happened then, when after industrialization and urbanization, people actually started to um, get um, education, so there was a variety, you know, of opportunities on uh, labor uh, markets, and they started to postpone their uh, first age at marriage, they started to postpone a marriage in general, so it started to be very prevalent just to cohabitate. And they were secured uh, with their welfare state that at older age they will be happy, they will get enough benefits, so they didn't have to rely anymore on their children. So that's why I say that welfare regimes are very important. So what happens next is that why then doesn't welfare regime explain everything, why people are more likely to live together? Well, it's about cultural norms as well. The thing is that welfare regimes and cultural norms, they're interacting between each other. If we change the welfare regime in one country, it doesn't mean that they will be less likely to live with their parents straightforward. Because maybe, like in Southern Europe, parents would expect to their children to stay until they marry. Or like in Eastern Europe, they would ask them, live with us, we'll help you with your baby. Don't move away, because then you will get less support from us. So it's also about expectations. And maybe some of you heard about the second demographic transition theory. So what it simply says is that people started to be more individualistic. They want to have fewer children because they want to first get a job, yeah, feel stable, feel secured, they uh, postpone age at first marriage, they, uh, that also is related to trying to kick out your adult children from your home because you want to enjoy your own life, right? But familistic culture still uh, persists in Europe, like in Southern Europe and Eastern Europe. And that's just the differences sometimes we have to accept because that's just the societies which have their own cultural norms. Right, so what we can conclude from this talk? It is a complex issue, yeah. Sorry, there's no right or wrong answer because it depends on socio-economic context which we look at. It, it depends how is developed provision of public health, caregiving and housing in that context. It's about family forms which evolve over centuries and gender norms and cultural expectations. So for example, in gender norms, in Scandinavian countries, it's very common that both men and women in the family, uh, they provide equal, um, you know, a housework. They, for example, when they have a, a baby, they have a paternity leave. So, for example, a father and mother can have 50-50. So, mother works part-time and father part-time. So, maybe that can also affect the fact that then they don't maybe need their parents to live with them to help with childcare, right? But for example, in Eastern Europe, there are such expectations that women will take care of the house and that a man will provide financially. And we will still see the changes because all these factors change across generations. So we are talking about now that Eastern Europe is so different from Western Europe. Well, maybe in 10 years, they will be all the same. We, we simply cannot predict how societies 
will want you know the expectation to go in which direction just a quick example so my parents married three months after they met each other they wanted to live together it was the end of USSR so right before the collapse of the Soviet Union they said to me that they will happily live even without marriage but no one would allow them just their older generations wouldn't accept it and obviously they wanted to have still good relationships with their parents and grandparents so as solution as many other young couples they got married and what happens nowadays is that many young couples cohabitate before marriage i have so many friends and relatives who do it and parents even my parents they did not expect us to get married married straight forward and have children at age of you know 22 like it was for example 10 years ago as a average age for russian women to have the first child it all changes and it wasn't you know even we didn't have to wait for these several generations to have a change it all changes before because the socio economic context changed and people started to adapt to a new situation in their country and expectations change right I just want to conclude quickly about who benefits in this case, uh, just trying to follow those articles which we saw about the UK. So what we can conclude is that if there's a caregiving reason to move together, then parents obviously benefit more from this. But adult children probably will suffer from multiple roles, you know, from working full time or switching to another job to work part time to provide caregiving to their parents. And it can be even more, more burdensome if they have their own children to take care of. If it's unemployment or divorce reason for adult child, probably the child will benefit from moving back to a parent because they will have the roof you know, above their head. But it will be pressure for their parents because now they will have to you know, take care of them, do more household chores and etc. Finally, I want to say about the uh, belief that women suffer more than men because they're family carers. There is expectation that women will take care of everything, whether it's adult child coming back home or whether she's an adult child starts to take care of her older mother. Well, so in my thesis, I study men's health and different types of living arrangements and I looked at intergenerational households in Russia and what I find is that actually men as adult children when they live with their parents in poor health over time they are more likely to have poor health as well so we find that there is actually interlinkage between health of older and younger generations particularly when they reside in the same household and, well, I think intergenerational living will never go away. So we just can't avoid it. It's a part of us. Thank you.